Welcome to Lesson 10. I'm Al Swigert. This course follows the content of my book, Scratch Programming Playground. You can read this book online for free at inventwithscratch.com. In this lesson, we're going to create a two-player version of our maze game. But first, there are a few changes that I want to make to our old program. Uh, this cat is a little bit too small, so instead of setting the size to 10%, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 15%. And also, these cat sprites uh, move a little too fast, so I'm going to change the number here in the change x by block from 10 to 4, and that'll make the cat move less each time it runs through this loop, which means that the cat will move at a slower rate. But that also means we need to change this number to negative 4. And then we need to do the same for all of the other blocks in this script. Let's test this out. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to save all of these changes by clicking on File and Save. And then I'm going to start my two-player version. And for this, I'm going to save a new file. So I'm going to click on File and Save As. That way we can still have our one-player version saved in a different file. But for our two-player version, I'm going to name this Al-Maze. And uh, maybe dash two player. So this will be the start of our two player game. Now there's nothing in Scratch that keeps you from making multiple players, except that all the players have to share the same keyboard and mouse. So we're going to have the second player use the WASD keys. These are the W, A, S, and D keys on your keyboard. So since this is on the left hand side of the keyboard, one player can just be using that side of the keyboard, and then the original player can be using the arrow keys on the right side of the keyboard. If you've ever played a game like Minecraft uh, or other video games, the WASD keys are a common way to use your left hand to move up, down, and left and right. So if we're going to have two different players, we're also going to need to have two different apples for goals for the players. So I'm going to right click on this apple sprite in the sprite area and select Duplicate. Now give me a second apple. Now this second apple will have all the same code as the original apple. So when we click on the green flag, both of the apples are going to go to this exact x, y position, negative 10, 170 at the top. So it's just going to look like one apple. So instead, what we want to do is have this second apple appear at the bottom. So we'll have the player one cat, the orange cat, start from the bottom and go to the top. We'll have the second player start at the top and go to the bottom. That way they have to uh, run through the same maze. They'll just be going in opposite directions. So let's change this. Be sure you have Apple 2 selected in the sprite area so that you're not editing the code for the first Apple. Let's change this to 10 and negative 170. So now when I click on the green flag, now oh, that second Apple, Apple 2, is down here. Let's go ahead and make this a green apple as well. Click on the Costumes tab to bring up the Paint Editor. You'll notice that right now, all the drawing tools are on the right side of the Paint Editor instead of the left side. And that's because this image is in Vector Mode. Now we'll go over the difference between Vector Mode and Bitmap Mode later. But for right now, most of these tools work the exact same way. We're just going to make a simple change. Click on the Fill Bucket tool, and then select a green color, and then just click once to change that apple to a green color. Now that looks good. Next, we're going to create a second cat for the second player. So right click on the orange cat and select duplicate. This will create a sprite named orange cat 2. Let's first let's repaint this. Click on the costumes and then click on the paint bucket tool. Let's make this a blue cat. So I'm going to select this blue color. I'm just going to click on each of these orange parts in the cat's uh, first costume. We won't need to change the second costume at all. It'll be enough just to change the first costume to blue. So now we have this blue cat, except it's still named Orange Cat 2. So I'm going to click on the I button to open its info panel and change this to Blue Cat. Now right now, the blue cat and the orange cat have the exact same code, just like the apple sprites have the exact same code. So when I click on the green flag and I press the up and down and left and right arrow keys, they're both moving at the exact same rate, and they're both moving in response to the same arrow keys. We don't want that to happen. We want the blue cat to be using the WASD keys. So I'm going to stop this real quick, make sure I have the blue cat selected, 
And just like how we have the apples start on the opposite ends, let's have this blue cat start at the top of the maze. Let's change this to negative 10 for the X and positive 170 for the Y. And then let's change which keys cause the blue cat to move around. So instead of the right arrow, we want to use the D key. And instead of the left arrow, we're going to use the A key. Instead of the up arrow, we'll use W. And instead of the down arrow key, we'll just use S. Move down here, S. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. Oh. Well, there's a problem. So the blue cat, we've changed this code. We forgot to change the code in this script. So when the blue cat starts at the very top, it's already touching the apple sprite at the very start. So we need to change this so that its goal is apple 2, which will be the green apple here at the bottom. And also when it starts the next level, we need to have it start at these x, y positions. So let's change this to negative 10 and this to 170. So click on the green flag. And now I can use the arrow keys to move around. But if I have a friend also playing on the left side of the keyboard, they can use the WASD keys to move the cat up, down, left, and right. And so we'll be racing each other trying to get to the apple. It's really hard to control two cats at the same time. Now there's one more thing that we need to add to both of the cat sprites, and that's when we have one of the cats get to its goal. We'll broadcast that next level sprite, and the cat that wins will go back to its original start position. See here for the orange cat, when it's touching its apple, it goes back to its start position and then broadcasts the next level broadcast. But the other cat that hasn't touched its goal apple isn't going to run this code. So we need to have it receive that same next level block so that it can be reset back to its starting position. So let's go ahead and go to the brown events category. Grab this. When I receive next level, then I want to go back to... Let me just increase the size of this. When I receive next level, I want to go back to my start position. So I'll go to the dark blue motion category and grab this go to XY block. Negative 10 and 170 for the XY position. And then the orange cat will need the exact same thing, but well, slightly different. Um, when it receives the next level block, it needs to go back to its start position, and the coordinates are slightly different. It'll be 10 and negative 170. So this way, if the other cat gets to its apple and then wins and then broadcasts that next level broadcast message, then this cat will go back to its original start position. Let's try that out. I'm just going to use a shortcut right here and move the cat there. And let's say the cat, the blue cat is moving around here. Yeah, and now both cats have been moved back to their respective starting positions. So go ahead and click on File and Save to save your work. And now grab a friend and try playing this game with two players at the same time. So in this lesson, we've created a two-player version of our one-player maze game. We did this by duplicating a few of the sprites and then making some changes because we didn't want the code to be the exact same as the other sprite. So for the apple, we wanted the XY positions to change. For the blue cat, we wanted the XY positions to change for some of these blocks, but also make it so that it uses the WASD keys instead of the arrow keys. All of the other code is kept the same, which is really handy. That means that we can just duplicate a sprite and make use of all the original code that we've added. And then we'll also add some more code, such as this when I receive next level, to make sure that both of the cats move back to their starting position at the beginning of the next level.